Welcome to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller on your Saturday. Hope your weekend has started off well, going well, whenever you're catching this. Let's just talk quickly. It's the weekend, right? You don't want to think about too much, but there is something that I think is worthy of note. And I'm going to do a separate podcast tomorrow to talk about, again, this whole structure around transformation, this as I've said, once in a multi-centuries opportunity. Okay, I just had to stop the recording and check something. (laughs) This is so cool. I'll do the whole thing on this tomorrow. So we'll expand on this tomorrow, but I just went back, and I'm presuming that this data is correct in this system that I'm using Astro Gold on a Mac as the uh, charting program. But I went back to the year 1517, is the last time that Saturn and Pluto were on top of each other in Capricorn, 1517. That was right after 1492. Remember Columbus sailing his ocean blue? This was right after that. So the early discovery, quote-unquote, of the Americas by the Europeans uh, happened under this. So, and, and, and (laughs) this is why this is so unique. The missing element was Jupiter. See, Jupiter is, is in here, but you know, as I'm looking at this, a lot of the aspects are the same. It's like, oh my gosh, things just never cease to amaze me with this and how it just in some ways doesn't change. But that was Christmas day, 1517. That's amazing. All right, let's talk about what's going on today. I thought yesterday, after yesterday when the sun moved into Cancer that it might be a good time to talk a little bit more about Cancer characteristics. But, you know, that's part of the learning is if you will get into Google and Google these things and start to make notes, like you can make notes about what each of the sign characteristics are. But we're watching now for moon activation, So like I said yesterday, wherever your moon is in your chart, look for some extra punch around that. And over the next month, we're also just looking for more uh, fluctuating emotions. Even though the sun is in Cancer, Cancer is ruled by the moon. So as we've been saying, we'll just follow the moon around. Now, the other thing that happened yesterday is that Neptune went retrograde. All right, let's talk about retrograde, especially with these outer planets. See, traditional astrology, and we're talking the like from the Middle Ages all the way back to even Babylon, okay, Egypt, Babylon. They only could see what they could see. The last planet that they could catch was Saturn with the naked eye. So there was no Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So when we talk about these slower-moving outer planets, if you will, we're talking about modern astrology. So a lot of people are going back to traditional astrology. That's why, and here's a technical term, the whole sign house thing, uh, which I've really kind of switched over to myself, has a lot of merit uh, because that was what the traditional astrologists looked at. And the angles, the aspect angles are much crisper in whole sign, but it does affect your reading. And I just got to say, from a personal note, for those of you interested in this conversation, the Placidus chart, in my own interpretation, has a little bit more merit of where the particular planets are in specifically one house. So I think you have to read both. That's the answer here is you have to look at both. So any good in-depth astrological reading would encompass both Placidus and whole house. What are we talking about here? Just real quick. When you take a three-dimensional sky and you plaster it on a two-dimensional screen or piece of paper, you have variance. And that's what these different house systems are trying to do is account for the variance. So it puts the alignment in different places. All right. So Neptune goes retrograde. That means it's going backward in its appearance in the sky. So if you were charting it on a piece of paper, all of a sudden it would slow down. You would put it in the same position, same position, same position, and then you'd start moving it back to where it just was. And that will be happening now until, I believe, December. Now, one thing that Neptune can do is cloud your vision. That's kind of what it's noted for. 
How would old Thomas know this? I have what is called a superstellium. I've got one of the weirdest formations that you can have in astrology. I've got three planets that are literally sitting on top of each other. Sun, Mars, and Neptune. Now, Neptune represents the spiritual aspect. So the fact that I'm doing this spiritual astrology podcast is not out of alignment at all with my chart. But the Neptune sitting on top of my sun has always given me a clouded perspective. It's a rose-colored glasses perspective as well. So in other words, you don't see as clearly. So you can look at where Neptune is in your own chart and realize that that foggy, rose-colored skew in that area is lifting a little bit. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to like this Neptune retrograde thing. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. So for now, somebody might say, well, you're not going to be as intuitive during this. Hmm. I don't know. Let's just see how this one goes. We'll kind of monitor it together. Uh, Just see and play with that. I think you can always supersede these things with intentions. So what I'm going to do, again, is recognize the pattern of what's happening. And I'm going to set intentions for more clarity, for crisper insight, And where that intuitive element might be rolled back a little bit, I'm just going to set an intention that whatever the spiritual element that is naturally there anyway is actually accentuated by the clarity that comes from the physical eyes. Does that make sense? So in other words, as perception increases, that the intuitive is just that natural awareness is just there. So what I'm going to do is make it an integration. That's the word I was looking for. An integration between the conscious, the ego self, if you will, and the intuitive so that they blend as one. There is no fog, so therefore there is not the need for the intuitive perception. They just morph into one. Ooh, that gives me chills. I'm going to enjoy this Neptune retro. Go for it, baby.